Where is he? What are you doing? Get it. Get it. Get it. Attack. Okay, okay. Hello! Welcome to the Lone Larch Podcast. My name is Jenny. You can find me on Instagram as Lone Larch Designs and on Ravelry as Gentastic or Lone Larch Designs and on Etsy as Lone Larch Designs. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good. I'm freaking out a little bit. Uh, Knit City is four weeks away. Um, four weeks from today, I will be at Kate's house packing vehicles to uh, go set up and Rosie's whining and that's really helping the situation a lot go find something to do Rosie where's your bone go get your bone where's your bone oh where's your bone oh, you're loud okay Shh. Shh. go be a deck dog oh my god Hounds are the best. Um, yeah. So here, let's do a podcast. Let's do For the Love of Trees first, since it's sitting on my lap and it's on the top of the pile that is sitting on my lap. Um, yeah, let's just do this. Okay. So last time we talked about fire, we're reading, I am reading from this book right here. Everything is backwards. Sorry. Um, last time we talked about fire and how it rejuvenates the forest and how it's a very natural process, but obviously can get out of hand. Um, and so, um, the fire has happened and it has become winter and now we're coming into spring. Um, this section of the book is called the seeds surroundings. When the snow starts to melt, the soil under our seed warms and life stirs within. In this, it has company. The first flowering plants have also begun to move. Bicolored lupins begin to grow farther up the slope, closer to the burn, because the seed's location was less scorched than the areas higher up. The soil isn't the soil around it isn't as deficient in nitrogen as it might have been. The lupins thrive in nitrogen deficient soil. Among among them are the most common fireweed, the same three meter plant that much farther north first recon recolonized wet gravel left behind by retreating glaciers. It loves both fire and ice. Lupins and common fireweed grow abundantly throughout the valley after the burn, but down here on the gravel bar, the smaller, less common broadleaf fireweed is more at home. It grows to a height of 30 centimeters, but the color of its four petal pink flowers is deeper and more intense than that of its taller congener. I've never heard that word before. I'll have to look that up. Don Muir walked through a clearing in the Doug, Douglas Fir Forests of Oregon in 1888, wrote that he had stepped into a charming wild garden full of lilies, orchids, heathworts, roses, etc., with colors so gay and forming such sumptuous masses of blooms that they make a gardens of civilization, however long, lovingly cared for, seem pathetic and silly. And it is reasonable to assume that some of those same wildflowers pioneered around our seeds in the 1300s. The lilies might have been the Colombian lily, better known as the tiger lily, which is found throughout the area, both in damp woods and in open meadows. Although its familiar orange petals with maroon spots don't appear until June, its, stemle uh, its stemless spears begin to pierce the soil in late April. The wood lily is also orange and maroon and also abundant in this area. The orchids mirror saw were posers. Orchids are the largest of the plant groups, compromising more than 
comprising sorry, more than 30,000 species worldwide. Many are saprophytes, an extremely primitive group that feeds primarily on decaying ve vegetation and hence has no need for chlorophyll. No doubt one of Muir's orchids was the pink lady slipper, but also is the deer headed, also known as the deer headed orchid, which thrives on mossy forest floors in the perpetual shade of the giant trees. Lady slippers entice bees into landing on the large pouting lower lip of their pink flower, whereupon the upper lip closes, trapping the bee inside. As the bee struggles to extricate itself, it bangs into the flower's anther stem picking up a cap full of pollen which, upon gaining its freedom, it may deposit upon another flower. Um, Muir seems to have invented the term heath warts, but the heath family includes uh, such common plants as blueberry, wild buckwheat, and bearberry. An, an evergreen shrub, also known, um, I'm taking out like all the Latin stuff because nobody needs to know the Latin if you really want to look it up, look it up. Um, so sorry if it's kind of all over the place. Um, very, very. An evergreen shrub also known by European trappers and traders who brought the word west as kinnikinnik. I love kinnikinnik. An Ojibwe word for mixture because the leaves were dried and mixed with tobacco to make supplies last longer on extended journeys. I didn't know that. That's cool. The Burberry the berries were also dried, pounded, mixed with salmon oil, and fried, so the name Kinnikinnik might have made sense to the Coast Salish people who lived in the area. Muir describes the Cassiope, I don't know what that word is either, Cassiope? Another heather as having exceedingly slender creeping branches and scale-like leaves, a tiny plant that in July spreads its wavering uh, interrupted belt of the loveliest blooms around the glacier lakes and meadows across the wild moory expanses. And by roses, Muir could have meant a whole host of plants, from true roses to the wild strawberry, the Indian plum or oso berry, and the imposing goat's beard. All members of the Rosaceae family and all found in the cool, high woodlands of the Douglas fir forest. These flowering plants will not harm the Douglas fir seed, Although when the tree reaches sapling height, it will neither want nor tolerate much shade. As a seed, it needs some protection from the burning sun like the seed of all other types of trees. It already contains everything it needs to grow into a tree. Uh, sorry, making sure it's still recording. Real life podcasting. Um, it was fertilized before it left its cone. It has endured its necessary dormant winter stage. It is a vessel of hope bearing all the accumulated genetic information necessary to carry out the me metabolic, oh, metabolic, holy cow, metabolic processes of life. Rooted in one place, it must extract what else it needs to survive from that spot. Carbon dioxide from the air, water, and other elements from the soil, the light, and light from the sun. It lies on the soil like a cocked pistol, protected within its tough outer casing, or testa, and encased, and encased in its endosper endosperm and are an embryonic embryonic yeah, root called a radical. The embryonic stem, the hypo <laughs> hypocotyl, all of these words bringing me back to biology in school, and five to seven embryonic leaves or cotyledons. It has a larder of food stored in the endosperm and cotyledons in the form of carbohydrates to carry it through its first precarious days after being sparked into germination, which it will nourish its which will nourish its growth until, as a seedling, seedling, it begins to photosynthesize. As spring comes to the valley, two ravens take up residence in one of the intact Douglas firs higher up than the seed. They often fly down to the stream to drink. Ravens are endlessly fascinating. They are the largest of the Corvidae, a group of <clears throat> a group that includes crows, jays, magpies, with wingspans of more than a meter, which is three feet, making them bigger than many hawks. They will eat anything, including tree buds in winter, but they prefer meat. They rob other birds' nests of eggs, nestling, nestling especially in shorebird colonies. Um, sorry, distracted by birds flying around in my spruce tree. 
They will pick up an errant deer mouse <clears throat> or two. They spend a great deal of time strolling along the seashore or river bank, picking up whatever living thing may be washed up. They attend all the fall salmon runs, shouldering bald eagles out of the way and rolling over stones with their beaks to get fresh eggs, which are packed with energy and nutrition. But they build their untidy nests of sticks off cliff. They build their tiny, their untidy nest of sticks off cliff edges, or high up in the tallest trees, which in the Douglas fir forest is high up indeed. But they keep their baleful, baleful. I wonder what that word means. Eyes to the ground, where their food is to be found. Their ruckus, throaty calls are part of a surprisingly diverse operatic repertoire that includes. Clucks. There's a stellar jay sitting outside my window. They're so pretty. I'll see if I can get a video of them later. There's three or four of them that keep flying, that frequent the yard. They're so pretty. Sorry. Distractions. Uh, repertoire that includes clucks, plaintive whales, and beautiful melodic the avian equivalent of Louis Armstrong suddenly launching into a song sounding like Bing Crosby. Although definitely the loudest, theirs are not the only sounds in the valley. Ravens are the brass section in the orchestra whose more delicate notes are provided by the Swanson thrushes, solitary vireos, yellow warblers, and other spring returnees. The yellow warblers are the Alaskan variety members of a highly vocal northern subspecies passing through on their way to the Aleutians. They eat like nervous tourists, avoiding open spaces in the big trees to forage in the low broadleaf thickets along the stream bed and around the edges of the regreening burn. They buzz the branches, hopping and hovering, plucking spider mites at a fantastic rate, their bright yellow tones shimmering in the sunlight. And a white and black pileated woodpecker looking startlingly, startlingly like a flying fossil with feathers magically restored, displays a consuming interest in carpenter ants but will not refrain from eating bark beetles. Insects of the family that are in the east, the vectors of the deadly Dutch elms disease. Here they are represented by the omniously named Douglas fir beetle a small shiny black beetle that is especially attracted to healthy dug furs that have been slightly damaged by fire or whose residence of uh, or whose residence to insect infestation is impaired by excessively hot dry summers the females bore through the bark into the trees cambium in the spring eat out an ovipositional gallery that might be half a meter long and deposit their eggs in it oh yeah ovipositol gallery that's yeah okay those are the galleries that they dig in between that it, like if the bark comes off you can see all the beautiful little wiggles throughout the wood I've, i just don't think i've ever heard ovipositional gallery i don't think i've ever heard that term before or have most likely forgotten it um the eggs hatch after a few weeks in the white larval and the white larval munch their way along the new feeding galleries until they emerge in the fall as adults. Wood, the woodpeckers grasping the tree bark with its long talons brace itself with its tail, turn its head sideways as though listening for the sound of munching. In doing so, it keeps its eye open for flathead fur borers, the females of which don't dig into the tree but deposit their eggs in the crevices of, in the bark and the woodpecker easily spots their bronze, black, scarab-shaped bodies glinting in the sun. That is all I'm going to read for today. If you have ever read out loud, you will understand <laughs> how incredibly difficult it is. It seems like such a simple thing to just read words off a page, but it is ridiculously hard. I, I don't know. Anyway... Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry if that was slightly painful. Um, I remember the first time I saw a real pileated woodpecker, like in the wild, was right after I recorded a podcast, actually. I was up at Red Lodge 
near Olds, where we used to live. Um, I was sitting in the forest, recorded the podcast, and I packed all my stuff back up into my bin, and I was walking back to the truck. And there was one standing on the ground beside a spruce tree, and I thought it was fake because it was so big. I had no idea these things were so big. This guy was a foot and a half tall. Yeah, he was a foot and a half tall. He was standing on the ground. He was walking towards the tree and then started doing what woodpeckers do, smashing the tree to find all the little yummy bits and pieces to eat. They're incredible creatures. I've seen lots of downy woodpeckers, but that was the only pileated that I'd ever seen. And they're incredible. They're really cool birds. Okay, carrying on. So, should we do some knitting stuff? Last time I talked to you, I showed you all sorts of uh, works in progress. I have not touched, I've only touched one of the things that I showed you because we are on a deadline for Knit City right now. So I am using all of my spare minutes um, to work on my Knit City sweater. So I'll show you that right now. I have gotten quite a bit done. I think I've gotten quite a bit done. Leave it up to me to choose a patterned, a completely patterned two colored sweater to quickly knit up before Knit City. I'm ridiculous, but that's what I did. So I've gotten to the armpits and half of Half of the stitches are being held, that's why it's all kind of skewampus here. So the back's being held right now. This is the front. The armpits are right there. So I'm about an inch and a half above the armpits. I think I have to go four and a half inches, but obviously I'm only knitting half the stitches right now, so it's going significantly quicker. The color in here is a little bit blown out but that's okay. Um, so the pattern that I'm doing, if you don't, if you didn't see last time's podcast, is uh, the pattern I'm doing is Velacour, Velacour by Andrea Maori, and it's a cropped shirt, although I'm following the measurements exactly the way they're doing it, and uh, sorry, neighbor man just walked by. I'm following the measurements exactly the way it is in the pattern and it's supposed to be cropped um, but it's going to hit me like right at the belt line so which I'm fine with I just thought it was going to be significantly shorter than that so um, more knitting than I thought it was going to be I guess is what I'm trying to say there the yarn that I'm using is fiddly dye works in her merino sock base um, the the main color, oh, I just had a complete brain fart. Layla. Yeah, right? Layla is the main color, and then the gold is Sawyer. And I am, like, inches away from finishing the first skein of Layla, the main color. So that's always fun. Like, I don't know if anybody else enjoys that when, you, when you're working on something as big as a sweater or like a big shawl or something and you you finish one skein and you're like yes checkpoint one I've gotten this far I can keep going now it's like a motivation thing for me uh yeah but <laughs> I guess to show that I've actually made some progress I don't know how this mass amount of fabric isn't enough of a show that I've made progress but I always like getting to the end of a skein of yarn so what else do I need to tell you Fiddly Dye Works, Layla and Sawyer and Angela Maori Villacour, I'm doing it on 3.25s, I think, which is US 3, yep. Yeah. And that's that. It. I'm pretty sure I have four weeks exactly from today. Well, not really, because I'll have left by now, but um, four weeks from today, is, yeah, because I'm probably not going to block it, and I'll probably be madly finishing it in Kate's living room, but four weeks from today to get this thing finished, so. I think I'll be fine, but I just need to keep, keep going. Oh my goodness, keep going. <laughs> Can you see the stress in my face? 
I'm sure I am going to be the person to say it out loud, but I'm sure all of the vendors are in the same boat as me and having small heart attacks daily about how they're feeling about the just how soon it is and how much they feel they still need to get done. But it is a real thing. Um, the pressure for Knit City and for any market really just, am I going to have enough? Am I going to have stuff that people are actually going to like? Um, have I forgotten anything? Like, there's just so much going on in our brains right now. It's a, it's a lot to take, but um, it'll be fine. I'm glad that Knit City was not our first market because that would have been way too overwhelming. Um, the setup of our booth is already sorted and it's all just sitting there waiting for us um, to be packed in the truck or at Kate's house or whatever. It's all ready and waiting, but just, man, production is, production is a huge stress. Anyway, enough of me freaking out. <laughs> it's going to be fine. I just need to get to work and not ignore my child in the process and my dog and my husband. And it's a fine balance, friends. It's a fine balance, as I'm sure you all know. Okay, so finished objects. Um, the last time I talked to you, I was talking about making Emmy a little sweater for first day of school, and I showed you skeins of yarn. Well, it's done, and I have... Um, I'm just making sure my neighbor's not like, what is she doing staring at a tiny camera in her live in her kitchen? But he's busy doing his thing. There's a big tree in the way, so you probably can't even see him. But anyway, so I made a sweater for Emmy for school, and here it is. It is complete. And it fits her perfectly. I did exactly the same size I did mine. The gauge was off just a tiny bit. It was a little bit smaller. So I was able to, well, actually, technically it was a little bit bigger. I had more stitches per inch. So I used a smaller size. I think I did size four to six for her. Um, she's seven and she she's a very narrow human like I am and I kept it very narrow for her. There wasn't a lot of ease um, for it, but it fit her absolutely perfect. The color was perfect, is perfect, to go with her eyes. Um, and I don't know if it helped, but it made me feel like I was doing something to help her with first day of school. And she had a big smile on her face when she put it on. So we'll see. I mean, she did last, days, last day of the first week of school is today. Um, and she's doing well. I think she's doing really well. She already has, um, the girl that sits next to her. She's in a one, two split. The girl that sits next to her is in grade one and she already has asked her for her phone number so that she can come over for play dates. And she's found a couple other kids at recess that aren't in her class that she's been playing with. So it's all going great. Um, but I mean, it's definitely an ongoing thing with the new school and the new teachers and just everything, starting new activities in the next couple weeks. Um, but I think, I think she's doing really well and we just carry on. That's all you can do. So did I tell you what this was? This is the Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits. And the yarn is Illimani. Did I say that right? Illimani, I think so. Illimani in uh, the denim colorway. And the base, I think, is called Amelie. Something like that. So, yeah, that's that actually went really fast. I think I had two weeks to do it. And it was being blocked five days before school started. So what is that? I did it in a week, essentially. A week and a bit. Week and a day. Eight days. Nine days. Nine days. So it was a great knit. I love this yarn so much. It's so stinking soft. And remember I was concerned about the fuzziness um, of the alpaca? She didn't care at all. Um, 
So I think she's gonna wear it a lot because it just fits her perfectly and it's a cozy little thing. So we'll shove that back there, close up. That's the only finished object I have, but I feel as though I've done a lot of knitting. I've knit a sweater and another half of a sweater in the past two weeks, so I think that's pretty good. I've just been focusing on deadlines, lots and lots of deadlines. Uh, okay, so last time I talked to you, I showed you the Sparwood hat. Um, I'm just making sure I'm not forgetting anything. I showed you the Sparwood hat. The pattern has been released. Um, thank you to everyone that's already bought the pattern. I did do a discount on it for the first two weeks. I forgot to look this up last night. Shoot. Um, I did do a discount. I think it's actually going to expire today if it hasn't already. I'm going to boost that discount to go for another two weeks so that um, for the knit along, you guys get a bit of a discount for that if you're wanting to participate. So we're going to do a Sparwood hat knit along. Um, and what are we going to do? I think I'll keep it open for a month. <clears throat> I'll keep it open for a month and um, there will be prizes at the end of it. I'm just trying to think of how we're going to do that. I'm staying away from Ravelry, um, not because I don't like it, not because of whatever. Um, I just simply don't have time to check another website and another whole uh, world. I have a lot going on. Um, I don't have time to deal with Ravelry threads and all of that. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think what I'm going to do is, um, for the prizes, once you've done, once you've knit or progressed along the way, um, post on Instagram, tag Sparwood hat. Um, and then I'll go through all of the tags for the finished objects there and choose a random winner. If you're not on Instagram, you still want to participate. I totally understand. Um, but send your finished objects pictures. Send me an email with a picture of your finished object is what I'm trying to spit out of my mouth. Um, my email is lonelarchdesigns at gmail.com, which I'll put down here. Um, if you want to participate, but you're just not into the social media thing, which is well done you. Um, so. The, uh, yeah, so the knit along will start today and it'll go for one month and I'll let you know exactly the end date. I'll do a post and all of that and I'll actually sort myself out and give you an actual end date. Well, okay, so let's just do this. The Friday that I'm at Kate's that morning, that's when I'll go through and who am I kidding? I'm not going to be thinking about that. Let's do it after Knit City. I'll get back from Knit City. On the 8th is when I get back home. So let's do it until October 10th. The morning of October 10th, I will go through all of the finished objects, or yeah, finished objects, posts, or emails, and pick a winner. I don't know what the prize is going to be yet. If anyone would like to donate a prize, um, give, me, give me a call. <laughs> send me an email or send me an Instagram message, whatever. Um, if you'd like to donate, if it's something big and that needs to be shipped, just send me a picture of it um, so that we only have to pay for shipping once so that we can just ship it straight to the uh, to the winner because shipping is outrageous and nobody needs to be paying double shipping. Okay, so I hope you guys want to participate and uh, give color work a go or just enjoy a color work hat if you've already done lots of color work. Um, this is the one that I did out of Yarn Lab, Sarah's yarn. Uh, it's DK, and the colors are, can I do it? I'm not going to remember. Let's see. The green's magnesium, calcium is the light, and carbon is the dark brown. I think I have that right. So those are her colors. Uh, I also did one in Kate's Fiddly Dye Works yarn. Sorry, things are a little bit blown out today. It's cloudy. I thought it wouldn't be so bright in here, but kind of is. 
I did one in Kate's yarn as well. Um, these are DK. The, the blue is Amelia, the gray is Ryan, and the darker color is Ben. Ben, I don't think she is dying right now. Um, it was kind of a test color that she sent to me. So um, you might not be able to get that exact color, but she has so many other colors that you can, I mean, a million different combinations that you can choose from on there. Or it's great for stash busting if you want to just go through and um, pick some some little bits of DK that you have in your stash. Pom-poms. You buy Red Fox Fibers. Awesome pom-poms. Rosie already tried getting one this morning. It was sitting on my lap and she came up and nibbling with her little front teeth. So funny. So that's a Sparrowwood hat. For those of you that have already bought it, I think I already said this, but thank you very much um, for your support. And yeah, I hope you guys want to participate. I will not be knitting another one. Um, I don't know if this is a faux pas or not, but I've already knit two of them. And I have, a knit <laughs> I have a knit city sweater to work on, so I'm not going to be knitting along with you, but I would love to see your progress, and I will put up some of my progress pictures that I took while I was knitting these guys to, um, to show you, I guess, just to participate in that respect. So that is the Sparwood hat. Um, what else was I going to show you? I have been madly sewing bags for Knit City as I keep talking about. Um, bucket bags, oh, backwards, bucket bags, bucket bags, um, medium sized bags, sock size bags. Those are the three sizes that I'm mainly going to have there. I will have some mini socks and um, I'll have mini socks and I'll have Notions pouches, but it'll just be like a small a small little amount. Um, but I'm mostly focusing on the bigger bags. Um, I will also have some of my patterns there, um, printed patterns there. They will have um, download codes, Ravelry download codes on them as well. So those should be showing up shortly. Those are just being printed right now. Um, I will also be having the leather wristbands, uh, shawl cuffs, there goes a morning dove. Um, shawl cuffs. I'm going to have a whole bunch of samples. I just did sample tags um, to put on all of our samples for our booth. I've got a lot of samples. So um, samples of my patterns, samples of Kate's yarn knit up, which uh, is something that we've been working really hard to get going because looking at a skein in... Um, in your hand and knowing what it's actually going to look like knit up are two very different things. So we've been working really hard to, so that we have examples of that. Um, we have something like, I think there's 24, 23 or 24 samples that we're going to have for you guys to look through and try on and um, enjoy, fondle, cuddle, whatever you want to do. I am going to have one Knit City exclusive bag um, and it is this bag right here that I am picking all of the puppy hair off of. This is going to be the Knit City exclusive bag. Sorry, it's everything's backwards. It's a medium wedge, zippered obviously, leather tie, leather zipper pull, sorry, uh, leather handle, and everything's already price tagged. That is another thing that I'm doing this year. Um, if you've seen me at any of the other markets, um, one of the comments that we got is that it was kind of confusing which bag was which. Uh, we got a lot of questions. Is this a medium? Is this what is this? So that they could look down the list of prices. I'm just price tagging everything now so that there's no question. Um, so that you guys don't have to wait and ask and be confused and um, you can, you'll just know right away. Um, what the prices are of things. The liner is stripey blue and greens that match the outside blues and greens. The zippers will be all different colors. Uh, this one is very similar to the kind of grello whatever color that's on the outside. But that is going to be the Knit City bag. I think I'm only going to have 10 of these. 
So my plan is to um, keep five out for the Saturday and then keep, put five fresh ones out on the Sunday just so that if people can't come Saturday, they're still, you know, everything is available to everyone to some degree. I mean, I can only do that so much. There's going to be um, some one-offs. Not every pattern is going to be on every bag in all the different sizes. So it's definitely first come, first serve to some degree, but um, I'm hoping that I can um, make stuff available to people that are in classes or just can't get there until Sunday. So Knit City bag, I hope you guys love it. I really want to keep one, but I must not. <laughs> this has been so hard. The buckets that I've been making too, I want to keep them all. Um, the pattern, the fabric that I'm using is just... It's making me very happy, and I think that's what's getting me through all this stressful production and sewing is just they're happy little bags. So these are two that I just grabbed that I just finished yes last night. Um, I'll show you these guys. You go right there. I'm having some nature prints and some more geometric. Uh, modern prints because I know that nature doesn't appeal to everyone and um, I mean honestly I'm not I'm just picking out fabric that I love and that makes me happy and I hope that it makes you guys happy too. I've made a change to my buckets they're the same size um, they're the same size as they have been um, but they're still made out of the waxed canvas, but they have pockets on the outside now. So pens, phone, whatever, a pair of snips. Oh, my snips are over there. But um, outer pockets. I have not put on any inner pockets yet. I don't, the bags that I have made with inner pockets, I don't like the way that I'm doing it because I find it pulls the bag down. Unless your bag is absolutely stuffed full of stuff, um, the inner pockets aren't very functional to me. And I haven't figured out a way that I want to do it so that I'm happy with it. So until then, outer pockets, wax canvas, leather handles. I also made the handles thicker um, than they have been in the past. So... Um, I think that they just match the, like, they're more proportional to the side of, size of the bag now. Sorry, I'm trying to get away from that glare, and it's not working at all. Um, the pattern on the inside, this is one of the more geometrical modern ones. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to have the different colors again. We've got the charcoal outer, there's the olive green, and the brown, and I'm going to have uh, the red as well. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a cranberry red, sort of. This is one of the nature print bags. Same thing, thicker handles, um, bigger rivets. Uh, there's leather bits on the inside of the rivets too, just so it stands up better. Um, as you can see, obviously, forest print on the inside. This is that weird grello color that for some reason, I am absolutely attracted to with everything. Come on, color. There you go. That's pretty accurate. It's actually pretty close to the color of those flowers back there. Um, this one doesn't have pockets on the outside and will be priced accordingly. They're a little bit less, obviously, because I use less fabric and it's less time consuming. Putting pockets on it seems like a simple thing, but once again, it adds time. Um, so what was I going to say about that? If you are on Instagram, I am putting up some of the things that I'm making along the way. If you're interested in it and you're not going to be at Knit City, send me a message on Instagram and I am more than happy to, to like make a PayPal invoice for you and send it to you. I can't guarantee that I'm going to have any of these bags after Knit City or have this be able to get the same fabric after Knit City. It's just like it's Russian Relay whether or not it's Russian Relay. Not really. <laughs> That's a bit extreme. It's a gamble. Um, 
for me to go back to the fabric store or even online, some of the places I order online, the fabric just sells out. So I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get it after Knit City. So if you see something that you like that I've posted or on here, um, send me a message and I'm more than happy to put it to the side for you. So that's that. Those are a couple of the new buckets. Um, yeah, my brain just switched to like, okay, what sewing do you need to get done this afternoon? You have exactly four and a half hours before the child comes home. What can you mash into that time? The pressure's real, my friends. <clears throat> so I haven't shown you, last time I didn't show you any yarn that I have acquired. I haven't been acquiring much yarn at all, to be honest. Um, but just before we moved... Um, it was fiber week. That's where I got the pom-poms. Remember I told you that last time. Um, it was fiber week and I went with Sarah and Sasha, my nitty friends who I still miss so much, but such is life. Um, Sarah just got married. Yeah, she looked so pretty. It was so fancy. She, uh, <laughs> her entrance, oh my goodness, her entrance to the wedding, it was like on a dock. Um, I don't know what to call it, but it's like by the water and her dad is a float plane pilot slash plane pilot. She arrived in a float plane flown by her dad and then walked down the dock and arrived at her wedding. So fancy. So much fancier than my wedding, but that's okay. My wedding was perfect for me and that was perfect for Sarah. So anyway, um, these I'm pretty sure this is the only yarn that I got at Old Fiber Week. I just had a thought. Maybe I did show you this. No, I don't think I did. I don't think I even put it on Instagram because I couldn't get a picture representing the color well enough. Anyway, enough. This is some yarn created by All Things Created Equal. Okay, Jenny, get here we go. Here we go. Things Created Equal. I love her tags. They're the see through tags. Um, she is from Didsbury, actually, and I just learned about her like five seconds before I moved. So I didn't really get to know her at all or get to know her yarn, but I did grab these because um, I wanted to support her. And I really like, I really like her color palette. So this one is called Mayflowers. It's a bulky weight. So I'm going to make a big, chunky, super dense hat for winter because winter is coming. Winter is always coming. Um, hand dyed in Mountain View County. As happy as I am to live here, I don't miss, it's weird, I don't miss Olds at all, but I miss my friends and I miss my job a lot, but that's the way it goes. It's, yeah, anyway, life changes are good. They're just hard. So this is all things created equal. And I'm really annoyed with the light. Hold on. I'm going to close the blinds. Let's see if that helps. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's see. Is it changing? Is the light changing? Don't knock over the camera. Don't knock over the camera. No, I think it's the skylights that's messing with us. So I'll just wave my hand over top of this randomly to see if I can get it to change. No, whatever. Okay, so that's that. Maybe if I hold it farther away or against my shirt. <laughs> oh my God. Hi, Whiskey. Want to come say hi? Come here. So that's that one. Pressed, what did I say? No. Mayflowers, bulky weight. You still can't see it. I'm sorry. And this is the other one I got from her. All things created equal. No, things created equal. And this one is called Tree Frog. I wonder why I got this one. Green, happy nature colors, and it has the word tree on it. So therefore, isn't it funny that, yeah, anyway. Is worsted weight single ply, 100% superwash merino. I can't wait to knit this one. I really like this base. 
Um, oh, that's pretty good, actually. I love this. No, nope, other way. Little bits of the burnt orange. And there's like the new this color that my living room, my old living room was, like the new leaf green. Um, and then there's even some turquoise and stuff in there. Yeah. Anyway, it's glorious. Go check her out. She's doing quite a few markets too. Um, I think just like Edmonton, Calgary area at this point. Um, but follow her on Instagram. She's got some awesome, awesome, awesome colors. So there's those two that I have um, that I have acquired. And then Kate sent me a housewarming gift. And this, if you noticed, this was sitting right here last time I recorded. And I completely forgot that it was sitting there and didn't mention it at all. So I'll mention it now. She sent me a housewarming gift. And obviously, that's yarn. Um, she sent Jared coffee. Oh, she, <laughs> she sent me yarn. She sent Jared coffee. And she also sent me a plant. Yes. Remember? like. A long time ago, probably two, three years ago, she sent me moss in the mail. Okay, this time she sent me a plant. I'm going to go get it. She sent me jade. Like, I don't know, five or six cuttings of jade. And it is so happy. It hasn't grown a whole lot since I got it because it's establishing itself in its pot. But I'm going to show you so that you can understand <laughs> how hilarious the amount of, yeah, veggie matter she no veggie matter that's not the right word organic material that she sent me in the mail it's so funny okay hold on okay this is the plant she sent all of this to me all of this in a box plus yarn plus coffee what else is in there a girl guide shirt for emmy because emmy's starting brownies in a week and what else some things that lanny made for emmy yeah it was hilarious and she's like she's texting me madly have you checked the mail yet have you checked the mail yet and i'm like trying to unpack the, the truck this is like the day that we arrived have you checked the mail yet? Have you checked the mail yet? There's perishables in there. I'm like, what? Perishables? What perishables is she sending me? And I open up the box and it's this Rubbermaid that's like this big. And these jades are gently packaged in, in damp paper towel, gently tucked in this box. I scream. Oh my goodness. It was hilarious. I, I wouldn't expect any less from Kate. It just brings me such joy and she knows <laughs> she knows how to make me smile. So Kate, your jade's looking awesome. It's so happy. It sits in the front bay window. And it's just it's soaking it up. <laughs> how many of your friends send you plants in the mail? Amazing. Okay, so back to the yarn. She sent me Harper. It's DK, right? Yeah. DK. And it's going to be totally blown out, too. I'm so sorry, Kate. It's the stupid sunlight. Maybe if I put it under my hat. Yeah, see, look. That's a lot better. I will protect you, Yarn, from the evil sun. I hope this, I hope this is one of the thumbnails that I can put at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's got black and brown and light tan, it, but it's got this great orangey tinge to the whole thing that um, just reminds me of the forest floor. I want to show you it more accurately. If you go to her website, she takes fantastic photos of uh, her yarn. Her color accuracy on her website is really, really good. So this is Harper. DK weight, superwash merino, 100% pure happiness. So what am I going to cast on? See, I'm already at this point where I'm kind of over the sweater, to be perfectly honest. I want it to be done so bad. Uh, and I can't decide what I'm going to cast on for Knit City. But in reality, 
I'm not going to be knitting at all during that city or in the evenings. I'm going to be very tired or we're going to be like doing fussing and figuring out stuff for the next day. So I probably shouldn't even bring knitting, but come on, you have to bring knitting to Knit City. You just have to. And I'm driving there, so I don't even have like plain knitting time. <sighs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring, <clears throat> I think I'm going to bring a couple minis um, that I have, and I'm going to make some um, new bracelets. Um, why can I not remember the pattern, the name of the pattern? Sarah, Riff Creative Sarah, who does the stitch markers and is awesome. Um, she has a bracelet pattern that you can either have like one wrap or uh, twisted and then it's two wraps of yarn and it's super, then there's like a bangle option to wrap. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put the name of the pattern at the bottom. So what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna choose two of my favorite minis and then I'll cast one on so that it's right ready to go. And then I can just knit through these tiny little things. And then I don't have to, not that I'm going to bring like a sweater to knit for Knit City, but you know what I mean. So is that it? I think that's it. I'm sorry if wearing a hat today drove you crazy, but I kept making excuses for, uh... sorry, I'm just creeping on my neighbor. He's wearing blue gloves. He's a mechanic, so maybe he just maybe he does all the time. I just don't notice. But he's like moving shovels around with blue gloves on. He's the nicest guy in the world. He's not like a murderer or anything. He's he's a fantastic human. Anyway, what was I saying? Sorry if the hat's driving you crazy, but I kept making excuses all week. Oh, I haven't showered. I haven't done my hair. Oh, I'm whatever. I'm sweaty. I can't podcast today and I thought this morning this is ridiculous this is everyday life for me uh seriously like I, I put a hat on and I carry on with my day so that I can get stuff done because this is gonna sound so bad but putting on makeup doing my hair feels like a waste of time to me when I've got so many other things that are more important right now and I do eventually shower. I'm not a complete disgusting human being. I do shower and I do all these things, but this is real life Jenny. So I figured let's just give you real life Jenny and that's okay. So yeah, enough blabbering for me. I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you next time. Okay, bye. Big kiss.